Today I'm going to show you how to uh, change motor mounts and a coupler on a Bell & Gasset small bearing frame, Series 60. So what you want to start with is you want to shut the power off to your pump. Service valves don't come into play here because you're not going to disturb anything with uh, water in it. So after you have your power shut off to your pump, you want to remove the set screw back here. And you want to take the electrical box cover off. And this is uh, so you can unwire it and work on it on a, on a bench somewhere so you don't have to hold on to it while it's in the air. Just uh, take note and write down what colored wires are hooked to what wires and disconnect them. Then you're ready to take the pump apart. So what we'll do is we'll disconnect it from the bearing assembly right here. And you just loosen the four mount screws for the, for the motor. Okay, so we've got the last bolt loose. And we'll take it apart, hold the back of the motor so it doesn't fall out on you and ruin the coupler that's in there. Well, and we'll gently take this out. And just for ease, what I would do is I would disconnect the coupler from the motor first. Nice little twist. And just unscrew the set screw just to the top of the coupler and then the shaft should pop right off of the coupler. Then you've got the motor in your hand. You can set that aside for right now. And then you can come in here and remove the coupler from the bearing assembly. And the same type of set screw. And you just unscrew it and pull it off the shaft. And then notice that the V of the coupler always goes towards the bearing assembly shaft. And since how we're going to change the coupler and motor mounts, of course I'm cheating because I'm using a new pump, on your old coupler, if it's whole, save it for emergency purposes. But you can inspect it at this time, and if there's any grooves or wire openings in the, uh, in the holes where the springs go through, keep it, but I suggest that you change it. Okay, now that we've got the coupler off and you've inspected it, we'll go to the motor. What you want to do is you want to take the motor out of its carriage. It can be tricky sometimes, so uh, I'll just show you how to do it. On the back side of the motor, there's a little adjustment clamp here that goes over the top of the motor mount. Okay, you have to loosen this screw enough to pull it off of the bracket and you'll tell when it gets loose. That back, uh, back nut here will start to spin. Just grab one, hold it a little bit. And if you notice, it's loose. Now, if you notice, there's two clips right down here. You just separate it, and it falls off, and then we'll set this piece aside. Okay, so now this back motor mount is ex exposed halfway around the cradle. This is the cradle, this is the motor mount. To get it out of the cradle, you have to grab the motor, and I'll show this to you this way. Under the motor, lift, and as you lift, you want to pull it back and wiggle so it falls out of the front of the cradle. And you keep wiggling until it pops out. And if you notice, your wires want to come out of the electrical box. Go ahead and pull them all the way through. You'll have to feed them back through when you go to put it back together. I'll set the cradle aside right now. All right, now that you've got the motor out of the bracket, you can inspect your motor mounts. Now, if you're breaking couplers uh, quite often, it's most likely your motor mounts. Obviously, I'm using a new motor and new motor mount, so I can't show you exactly what to look for. But if you notice the rubber, if it's sagging in any way, in other words, there's more rubber here and not enough rubber down here, it's out of round. That's how you inspect the mount. So that's when they need replacing, and that's probably why you're breaking couplers. Now, motor mounts. It's real easy. Place the motor on your bench, get a good, healthy, thick, regular screwdriver, 
And what you want to do, John, why don't you come in here? The screwdriver, if you look at this inner ring right here, in fact, I'll show it to you on the new ones. You can edit this however you want. If you notice, the new one has an inner steel ring. So what you want to do is you want to take your screwdriver on your existing motor mount and you want to drive like this through the rubber onto that middle inner ring and drive that motor mount off the motor. So here's how we do it. You get it behind the motor mount, put the flat part of the screwdriver onto the rubber. And if you want to pry it just a little bit, take a hammer and drive the screwdriver down through the rubber and onto that inner metal ring. So here we go. We'll drive this off. Okay. Set the bad motor mount aside. And then do the same on the other side. Now that we've got them both off of the motor, we'll put the new ones on. Now when you buy them, they come in a set. So there's two in a box, one for each side. Doesn't matter which side is which. You can put one on one side and one on the other. Doesn't matter. What you want to do is you want to put this little groove at 12 o'clock or straight up on the top of the motor. And by the top of the motor, I mean uh, the capacitor cover should always be up. So therefore, that's 12 o'clock, and then we just slide it on the end of the end bell. Just kind of put it in place with your hand. Now what you want to do here is, don't hit your fingers, don't hit your wires. Take your hammer and go around in a circular motion on the inner ring of this motor mount. And just tap it. By doing this, you, you're putting it on evenly and you're not twisting it up and everything. When you get to this position, what you want to do is you want to make sure that this inner metal ring is flush to the outside of the motor. Okay. All right, now that we've got the motor mounts back on, you're ready to put it back in the motor cradle. So we'll bring the cradle back in here. Now what I like to do is I like to run <coughs> the wires through first. And you just feed them back towards the electrical box. And if you notice, they come right back out here. Now very carefully, grab the motor. And just like you took it out, you want to tip it up. If you notice the front mount, you want to slide it into the groove of the motor bracket and at the same time drop the back of the motor onto the cradle. Now if you notice up front here, it's sticking out through the back side in between the motor and the cradle. Just kind of cup it in your hand and you got to be careful back here that you're not hooking the motor mount. Move it forward and press it into place. Now you'll know you, you, when you have it in pr place because the back motor mount is going to want to come back down and sit in this groove of the mount and the bracket right here. It'll sit nice and tight in that groove. Now we've got it back in the bracket. We want to pull the rest of our wires through. And then to tell that you've got them all pulled through, if you look on the bottom of the motor, there's your wires right there. There's nothing curled up in there. They're all pulled back through. Okay, now that we've got the motor back in its bracket, we need to secure it back into place with our little tie-down clip. Just like when you took it off, 
you drop it on top of the motor mount. If you notice on the bracket, it's niched here, which means the little ears fit right in there. And here we go. Into place like so. You can hold it and then start to tighten this down. Now when you start to get it tight, you don't want to over tighten it and squish the motor mount. Just snug, because the clip actually holds it in place. So we'll get it snug. And when I mean snug, you'll start to get a little resistance and then you'll start to notice that the motor mount will crease just a little bit. Don't go much farther than that. All right, now that we've got the motor all ready to go back on, going to get ready to put our new coupler on. I suggest you put it on the bearing assembly first instead of holding all the weight in here and trying to work inside the bearing assembly. Obviously it's easier to put your new coupler on first. V side of the coupler to the bearing assembly. What you want to do is align the shaft where the dimple is in through these grooves on the side of the bearing assembly. So we'll slide it on. Set screw into the little dental mark on the shaft. Put it into place. Take your Allen and snug it down. Now if you're off center a little bit, it'll be okay because it's a tapered sh uh, dimple in the shaft. It'll actually suck that set screw down into the hole and center it for you. Now that we've got the coupler attached to the uh, bearing assembly, what you want to do is first set your set screw. Make sure that it's not sticking out through where the shaft is going to go through. What we'll do is we'll position it so it's comfortable for ourselves. So we'll lay it right here. We'll take the motor. If you notice the dimple, it gives you a little bit of a fudge factor. Okay, I'm going to want to lift the motor up. I'm going to want to place the coupler on the motor shaft, like so. Now that we've got the coupler half on the motor, start setting the set screw. And if you watch, when you set the set screw, it'll actually move the coupler half into place because the set screw is actually going down into that little dimple. Tighten the same way as the bearing assembly side, just a little twist. And you're ready to put in your bolts. Now when you put this together, what you want to make sure is, is that the motor is pulling by these ears and the coupler is kind of aligned before you slide it together. Otherwise it'll clank when you start it. So we'll line the bracket up with its bolt holes and put your bolts into place here, attaching it to the bearing assembly. Okay, now that I've got the bolts snug with my fingers, we can tighten them down and snug. You don't need to over tighten them, just a nice little twist. I like to go every opposite. All right. Now we're ready to rewire it. You can rewire it by what you wrote down earlier as far as color codes. And you'll tuck these back in. And you'll take the electrical box cover and put it back on, hold it in place, tighten the cap screw, turn your power on and you're ready to pump some water.